It's April the 18th. Let's read the Bible. Friends, welcome back to this year-long journey from Genesis to Revelation in just one year. And here we are, midpoint of the book of April. We've gone through so many books of the Bible and yet so much more to go. So glad that you are with us. We're in the Gospel of Luke right now. Uh, I got a note from a friend of mine who said that she said about her and her husband, she said, we haven't missed a day and we don't intend to. Isn't that wonderful? Not just they've been with us from the beginning, but they intend to stay with us all the way to the end. And by the way, I know most people are not going to be able to go through all 365 days exactly as we go through it. And that is why if you go to keepbelieving.com anytime, day or night, you'll be able to find all the videos that we've done so far, all for January, February, March, and as far as we've gone in the month of April. By the time we get to December, by God's grace, we intend to have all of them up there. So anytime, day or night, just come to keepbelieving.com and you'll just uh, find the page that says, let's read the Bible, scroll on down, You'll see a, a set of tabs for the months, January, February, March, whichever month you want to go to. Just click on that tab and all the videos for that month, they're right there. They're free. You can watch them 24 hours a day. And I do want to say this, people ask me what translation I'm using. I have varied a little bit. We started with the, uh, uh, with the World English Bible and switched over to the Christian Standard Bible. And in the book of Psalms now, I'm doing the 1984 NIV. I'm not really wedded to one particular translation, but just in case you want to know, if you want to follow along word for word, Christian Standard Bibles, what we're using. Okay, Luke chapters 10, 11, and 12. Three things to look for. Luke chapter 10, pay attention. We are coming up to the parable of the Good Samaritan, one of the most famous stories Jesus ever told. Luke chapter 11, Lord, teach us to pray. As John taught his disciples, Lord, teach us to pray. What Jesus says about prayer, amazing. Luke chapter 12, well, there's a, there's a lot of stuff in Luke 12, but pay attention to the warning about greed and covetousness. The story, the parable of the rich fool. He was a fool, not because he was rich. He was a fool because he was rich and forgot where his riches came from. He didn't realize they all came from God. So Luke chapter 10, after this, the Lord appointed 72 others and he sent them ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself was about to go. He told them the harvest is abundant, but the workers are few. Therefore, pray to the Lord of the harvest to send out workers into his harvest. Now go, I'm sending you out like lambs among wolves, don't carry a money bag, traveling bag or sandals. Don't greet anyone along the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, peace to this household. If a person of peace is there, your peace will rest on him. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking what they offer, for the worker is worthy of his wages. Don't move from house to house. When you enter any town and they welcome you, eat the things set before you. Heal the sick who are there and tell them, the kingdom of God has come near you. When you enter any town and they don't welcome you, go out into its streets and say, we are wiping off even the dust of your town that clings to our feet as a witness against you. Know this for certain, the kingdom of God has come near. I tell you, on that day, it will be more tolerable for Sodom than for that town. Woe, woe to you, Chorazin. Woe to you, Bethsaida. For if the miracles that were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But it will be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the judgment than for you and you, Capernaum. Will you be exalted to heaven? No, you will go down to Hades. Whoever listens to you, listens to me. Whoever rejects you, rejects me. And whoever rejects me, rejects the one who sent me. The 72 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. He said to them, I watched Satan fall from heaven like lightning. Look, I have given you the authority to trample on snakes and scorpions 
and over all the power of the enemy. Nothing at all will harm you. However, don't rejoice that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. At that time, he rejoiced in the Holy Spirit and said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and intelligent and revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, because this was your good pleasure. All things have been entrusted to me by my Father. No one knows who the Son is except the Father, and who the Father is except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son desires to reveal him. Then, turning to his disciples, he said privately, Blessed are the eyes that see the things you see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings wanted to see the things you see, but didn't see them, to hear the things you hear, but didn't hear them. Then an expert of the law stood up to test him, saying, Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law, he asked him. How do you read it? He answered, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. You've answered correctly, he told them. Do this, and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, Who is my neighbor? Jesus took up the question and said, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers. They stripped him, beat him up, and fled, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down that road. When he saw him, he passed by on the other side. In the same way, a Levite, when he arrived at the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan on his journey came up to him, and when he saw the man, he had compassion. He went over to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on olive oil and wine. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day, he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him. When I come back, I'll reimburse you for whatever extra you spend. Which of these three do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? The one who showed mercy to him, he said, Then Jesus told him, Go and do the same. While they were traveling, he entered a village, and a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary, who also sat at the Lord's feet and was listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks, and she came up and asked the Lord, Don't you care that my sister has left me to serve alone? So tell her to give me a hand. The Lord answered her, Martha, Martha. You are worried and upset about many things, but one thing is necessary. Mary has made the right choice, and it will not be taken away from her. Luke 11. He was praying in a certain place, and when he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John also taught his disciples. He said to them, Whenever you pray, say, Father, your name be honored as holy, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves also forgive everyone in debt to us, and do not bring us into temptation. He also said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend and goes to him at midnight and says to him, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, because a friend of mine on a journey has come to me, and I don't have anything to offer him. Then he will answer from inside and say, Don't bother me. The door is already locked, and my children and I have gone to bed. I can't get up to give you anything. I tell you, even though he won't get up and give him anything, because he is his friend, yet, because of his friend's shameless boldness, he will get up and give him as much as he needs. So, I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds and to the one who knocks, the door will be open. What father among you, if his son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead of a fish? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Now, he was driving out a demon that was mute. When the demon came out, the man who'd been mute spoke, and the crowds were amazed. But some of them said, He drives out demons by Beelzebul, the the ruler of the demons, and others as a test were demanding of him a sign from heaven. Knowing their thoughts, he said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself is headed for destruction, 
and a house divided against itself falls. If Satan also is divided against himself, how will his kingdom stand? For you say, I drive out demons by Beelzebul. And if I drive out demons by Beelzebul, by whom do your sons drive them out? For this reason, they will be your judges. If I drive out demons by the finger of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. When a strong man, fully armed, guards his estate, his possessions are secure. But when one stronger than he attacks and overpowers him, he takes from him all his weapons, all his weapons he is trusted in, and divides up his plunder. Anyone who is not with me is against me, and anyone who does not gather with me scatters. When an unclean spirit comes out of a person, it roams through waterless places looking for rest, and not finding rest, it then says, I'll go back to my house that I came from, returning it finds the house swept and put in order. Then it goes and brings seven other spirits more evil than itself, and they enter and settle down there. As a result, that person's last condition is worse than the first. As he was saying these things, a woman from the crowd raised her voice and said to him, Blessed is the womb that bore you and the one who nursed you. He said, Rather, blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. As the crowds were increasing, he began saying, This generation is an evil generation. It demands a sign, but no sign will be given to it except the sign of Jonah. For just as Jonah became a sign to the people of Nineveh, so also the Son of Man will be to this generation. The Queen of the South will rise up at the judgment with the men of this generation and condemn them, because she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And look, someone greater than Solomon is here. The men of Nineveh will stand up at the judgment with this generation and condemn it because they repented at Jonah's preaching. And look, someone greater than Jonah is here. No one lights a lamp and puts it in the cellar or under a basket, but on a lampstand so that those who come in may see its light. Your eye is the lamp of the body. When your eye is healthy, your whole body is also full of light. But when it is bad, your body is also full of darkness. Take care of them, that the light in you is not darkness. If, therefore, your whole body is full of light, with no part of it in darkness, it will be entirely illuminated, as when a lamp shines its light on you. As he was speaking, a Pharisee asked him to dine with him, so he went in and reclined at the table. When the Pharisee saw this, he was amazed that he did not first perform the ritual washing before dinner. But the Lord said to him, Now, you Pharisees, clean the outside of the cup and dish, but inside you're full of greed and evil. Fools! Didn't he who made the outside also make the inside? But give from what is within to the poor, and then everything is clean for you. But woe to you Pharisees! You give a tenth of mint, rue, and every kind of herb, and you bypass justice and love for God. These things you should have done without neglecting the others. Woe to you, Pharisees! You love the front seat in the synagogues and greetings in the marketplaces. Woe to you! You are like unmarked grave, graves. The people who walk over them don't know it. One of the experts in the law answered him, Teacher, when you say these things, you insult us too. And then he said, Woe to you, experts in the law! You load people with burdens that are hard to carry, and yet you yourselves don't touch these burdens with one of your fingers. Woe to you! You build tombs for the prophets, and your fathers killed them. Therefore, you are witnesses that you approve the deeds of your fathers, for they killed them, and you build their monuments. Because of this, the wisdom of God said, I will send them prophets and apostles, and some of them they will kill and persecute, so that this generation may be held responsible for the blood of all the prophets since the foundation of the world, from the blood of Abel to the blood of Zechariah, who perished between the altar and the sanctuary. Yes, I tell you, this generation will be held responsible. Woe to you experts in the law. You have taken away the key to knowledge. You didn't go in yourselves, and you hindered those who were trying to go in. When he left there, the scribes and the Pharisees began to oppose him fiercely, and to cross-examine him about many things. They were lying in wait for him to trap him in something he said. Luke 12. Meanwhile, a crowd of many thousands came together so that they were trampling on one another. He began to say to his disciples first, 
Be on your guard against the leaven of the Pharisee, which is hypocrisy. There is nothing covered that won't be uncovered, nothing hidden that won't be made known. Therefore, whatever you have said in the dark will be heard in the light, and what you have whispered in an ear in private rooms will be proclaimed on the housetops. I say to you, my friends, don't fear those who kill the body, and after that can do nothing more but I. But I will show you the one to fear. Fear him who has authority to throw people into hell after death. Yes, I say to you, this is the one to fear. Aren't five sparrows sold for two pennies? Yet not one of them is forgotten in God's sight. Indeed, the hairs of your head are all counted. Don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. And I say to you, anyone who acknowledges me before others, the Son of Man will acknowledge him before the angels of God. But whoever denies me before others will be denied before the angels of God. Anyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven, but the one who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. Whenever they bring you before synagogues and rulers and authorities, don't worry about how you should defend yourselves or what you should say, for the Holy Spirit will teach you at that very hour what must be said. Someone from the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. Friend, he said to him, who appointed me a judge or arbitrator over you? He then told them, watch out and be on guard against all greed, because one's life is not in the abundance of his possessions. Then he told them a parable. A rich man's land was very productive. He thought to himself, what should I do since I don't have anywhere to store my crops? I will do this, he said. I'll tear down my barns and build bigger ones and store all my grain and all my goods there. Then I'll say to myself, you have many goods stored up for many years. Take it easy, eat, drink, and enjoy life. But God said to him, You fool! This very night, your life is demanded of you, and the things you have prepared, whose will they be? That's how it is with the one who stores up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. Then he said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, don't worry about your life, what you will eat, or about the body, what you will wear. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothing. Consider the ravens. They don't sow or reap. They don't have a storeroom or a barn. Yet God feeds them. Aren't you worth more than the birds? Can any of you add one moment to his lifespan by worrying? If then you're not able to do a little thing, why worry about the rest? Consider how the wildflowers grow. They don't labor or spin thread, yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all his splendor was adorned like one of these. If that's how God clothes the if that's how God clothes the grass which is in the field today and is thrown into the furnace tomorrow, how much more will he do for you, you of little faith faith? Don't strive for what you should eat or what you should drink, and don't be anxious. For the Gentile world eagerly seeks all these things, and your father knows that you need them. But Seek his kingdom, and these things will be provided for you. Don't be afraid, little flock, because your father delights to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to the poor. Make money bags for yourselves that won't grow old, an inexhaustible treasure in heaven where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be ready for service and have your lamps lit. You are to be like people waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet so that when he comes and knocks, they can open the door for him at once. Blessed will be those servants the master finds alert when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will get ready, have them recline at the table, and then come and serve them. If he comes in the middle of the night or even near dawn and finds them alert, blessed are those servants. But know this, if the homeowner had known at what hour the thief was coming, you would not have let his house be broken into. You also be ready, because the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Lord, Peter asked, are you telling this parable to us or to everyone? The Lord said, who then is the faithful and sensible manager? His master will put in charge of his household and servants to give them their allotted food at the proper time. Blessed is that servant whom the master finds doing his job when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will put him in charge of all his possessions. But if that servant says in his heart, my master is delaying his coming and starts to beat the male and female servants and to eat and drink and get drunk, that 
servant's master will come on a day he does not expect him, at an hour he does not know, he will cut him to pieces and assign him a place with the unfaithful. And that servant who knew his master's will and didn't prepare himself or do it will be severely beaten. But the one who did not know and did what deserved. Verse 48. But the one who did not know and did what deserved punishment will receive a light beating. From everyone who has been given much, much will be required. And from the one who has been entrusted with much, even more will be expected. I came to bring fire on the earth, and how I wish it were already set ablaze, but I have a baptism to undergo, and how it consumes me until it is finished. Do you think that I came here to bring peace on the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, five in one household will be divided, three against two, and two against three. They will be divided, father against son, son against father, mother against daughter, daughter against mother, mother-in-law against daughter-in-law, daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. He also said to the crowds, when you see a cloud rising in the west, right away you say a storm is coming, and so it does. And when the south wind is blowing, you say, it's going to be hot, and it is. Hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of the earth and the sky, but why don't you know how to interpret this present time? Why don't you judge for yourselves what is right? As you are going with your adversary to the ruler, make an effort to settle with him along the way. Then he won't drag you before the judge. The judge hands you over to the bailiff, and the bailiff throw you into prison. I tell you, you will never get out of there until you have paid the last penny. There's a lot here today. Combine just two thoughts and we're done. We should not worry. Jesus is coming. We should not fret. Jesus is coming. We should not be overly concerned about wealth of this world. Jesus is coming. I mean, the first part of the chapter is about, about covetousness, the rich fool. Not a warning about riches. It's a warning about forgetting God. And the ultimate mistake we can make here in our own world today is to live as if Jesus will never come. May I say to you, he is coming. He is coming soon. He is coming at an hour that no one expects. Jesus said, look around, pay attention, pay attention. He's coming. Are you ready? Live today as if Jesus might come today. And tomorrow, live tomorrow as if Jesus might come tomorrow. And the day after tomorrow, live as if he might come the day after tomorrow. One of these days, you will be right. Go out and have a great expectant day. Live in the light of his coming. Rejoice in that promise. Have a great day, folks. Come back tomorrow. A whole lot more. We're coming up to the great parables tomorrow of uh, the lost sheep, the lost coin, and the lost son. Parable of the prodigal son. All that's tomorrow. See you then.